All right, let's get Cassandra installed so we can create some tables and mess around and I can show you how it actually works. Now this is pretty complicated stuff. Unfortunately, installing Cassandra on the Hortonworks Docker sandbox is not trivial. It doesn't come with it as part of Ambari. So we kind of have to do it the hard way. Someone did actually make an Ambari service for Cassandra at one point, but unfortunately it hasn't been kept up to date. So it's not compatible with um, HTTP 2.5, which is what we're running here. So fine, we'll have to do it the hard way. Now this is likely to change. So, you know, it might not make sense for you to try to follow along with me here because the details are probably going to be changing a lot as time goes on. But if you want to give it a shot, feel free to. I'm going to go ahead and open up a putty session to my virtual box here. And we'll start off logged in as Maria underscore dev. Obviously, I've already started up my sandbox in virtual box. And obviously, I cannot type. All right, there we go. So I'm going to do everything as root because Maria dev has too many restrictions on it for installing services and things like that. So I'm just going to say su root and enter my root password. And now I should have unfettered access to my little virtual box here. Obviously, you want to be very careful while you're logged in as root. First thing we need to do, so this version of uh, Hortonworks Docker Sandbox is actually running Python version 2.6, and as luck would have it, Cassandra requires Python 2.7. However, I can't just upgrade Python because CentOS, which is the operating system Hortonworks runs on, requires Python 2.6. Let's just make sure that's the case. So if I type in Python-V, Sure enough, I'm running Python 2.6. So what I need to do is install Python 2.7 alongside 2.6 and do it in such a way that I can switch between the two as needed. So let's go ahead and take care of that. What I'm going to do, first I'm going to do, uh, I don't need sudo because I'm yum, uh, I'm, I'm already root. Let's type in yum update just to make sure all my packages are up to date. A few things need to be updated, so let's let that take care of itself. Oh, actually, I'm up to date. Cool. All right. Now, what I do, what I want to do now is install something called SCL utils. That's called Software Collections, and that's going to give me the ability to switch between my Python versions. So, yum install SCL utils. Wow, I really can't type today. There we go. <clears throat> yes. Next thing I'm going to install is. CentOS-release-SCL-RH. That's going to be the CentOS-specific component that lets me switch between Python releases. And finally, I will install yum install Python 2.7. Sure. All right, next I'm gonna actually switch between it. I'm gonna switch to Python 2.7 by typing SCL enable Python 2.7 bash, okay? And now if I type in Python dash V, I'm running Python 2.7, aha! And I've done it in such a way that it doesn't break the operating system. Now you do need to remember to enter SCL enable Python 2.7 bash to actually switch to Python 2.7 before you actually try to use Cassandra going forward. So this is a little extra annoying step there. Anyway, now that we have that out of the way, we can install Cassandra itself. But before we can, we can't just type in yum install Cassandra, unfortunately, because again, Hortonworks isn't set up with the necessary repository to pick up the Cassandra packages. So that's the first thing we have to do. So let's CD into the slash etc directory. And under there, there's a yum.repos.d directory. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do in here is create a new file that has information about the Datastax repository, which is where it's going to find the resources for Cassandra. So I'm just going to use vi for lack of something better. That's a little command line text editor, and we'll call this datastax.repo. And I'm going to hit I to go into insert mode and type the following, bracket datastax, bracket. Name equals, give it a human readable name, datastax repo for Apache Cassandra. And base URL, 
which is where the repository lives, is http colon slash slash rpm.datastacks.com slash community. It will be enabled, enable equals one, and gpg check equals zero. Now I hit escape colon wq, that tells VI to write and quit. And just to make sure that it's still there, let's do a uh, cat data stacks .repo. And there's our file, cool. So now I can actually install this bad boy. So to do that, yum, install DSC30 is the package name, okay? Data stacks Cassandra, I believe is what that stands for. And if we didn't have any typos in our repository file, it should get it, sure enough. Here it comes. Cool, so far so good. Now, remember that the way that we're gonna interact with Cassandra is through a command line tool called CQL shell, SQL shell. CQL sh is the actual command. But before we can run that, we need to get the Python dependencies for it installed. There's just a lot of steps here. To do that, we're going to type in pip install cqlsh. And I already did that earlier, but for you, that's going to actually do something. And finally, I can actually run Cassandra. So let's type in service Cassandra start. And if we're lucky, Cassandra will indeed start up. So obviously I'm just running this on a single node here, my little virtual box here. So by default, it just runs locally. If I was on a real cluster, of course, you would be installing this on multiple nodes and doing more interesting things. All right, we have Cassandra running. This is progress. Let's see if we can actually uh, set up a table in it, shall we? So CQLSH should get us into the command line prompt for Cassandra. Oh, what's this mean? So. We have a mismatch between the SQL shell package and the actual version that I installed, but that's okay. I can actually pass in as a parameter what version I want to talk to. So let's instead type in SQL sh CQLSH. Um, what's the syntax? Dash dash CQL version equals quote 3.4.0. Because if you look at this error message, it's saying it wants 3.4.0, and I'm trying to talk 3.3.1. So that's how we're going to get around that. Hey, we're in, finally, finally. Okay, we have Cassandra running and I have a prompt to it, so now I can actually do stuff. Let's actually create a table. So like I said, what we're gonna try to do here is create a table for the MovieLens users data set. So let's make a table for that. First though, we need to create a key space. And if you remember, a key space in Cassandra is like a database in MySQL or something else. So let's do that. Create key space. Let's call it MovieLens with replication equals class. Oh, that has to be in single quote, sorry. Class, single quote, simple strategy. Really not much point in uh, worrying about replication schemes uh, when we are, we're only running on one node, right? So we're gonna keep this nice and simple. Replication factor. In a perfect world, we like one replication copy, but uh, that's not gonna happen with one node now, is it? and curly brackets and durable rights equals true. All right. So that should create our key space with the uh, replication properties we want and durable rights enabled, which is pretty much what you usually want to do. Obviously, again, if you're running on a real cluster, you would use different values here for the replication strategy and replication factor. There are different ones you can choose from that are more aware of the actual network topology of your Cassandra cluster. So you want to refer to the documentation or the uh, Cassandra book from O'Reilly is a good one too if you want more details on how you can actually set that up and take advantage of the knowledge of your network topology to do things like have Cassandra optimized for talking to machines that are actually physically located on the same rack, um, avoiding transactions you know, as much as possible that go across data centers, things like that. So you can actually set things up like that. Anyway, we now have a movie lens key space. So let's use it. Use movie lens. That puts us into the movie lens key space. And now our prompt says SQL shell movie lens. So we know we're working within the movie lens key space. Uh, let's create our table. <clears throat> create table. We'll call it users. And it's going to contain the following columns user underscore ID, 
which will be an integer. We'll have an age column, that's also an integer. A gender column, which is text, male or female. An occupation, which is text. And a zip, which is also text, because there's actually some uh, Canadian and postal codes, I think, in there or something that have letters in them. And we will also we also need to specify the primary key of this table. Primary key user underscore ID, <clears throat> just like that. So remember, even though this looks like SQL, it's really not. Everything is still non-relational, and everything needs to have a primary key because it's going to hash that primary key to figure out which node on my Cassandra cluster things get stored on within this table. It worked. Let's uh, make sure it's there. Describe table users. And we'll tell you more about it. So you can see up here that our columns that we defined are there in one place. And there's more details here about how it's actually structured internally. I'm not going to go into that right now. And we'll see that it is, in fact, empty. Select star from users. Nothing in it. But, you know, the syntax for CQL is pretty much the same as SQL. You know, you just have those restrictions where you can't do joins. And you have to make sure that, you know, you can't just do arbitrary queries on any column. That primary key needs to come into play somehow. Uh, star being okay because it's just gonna say I'm gonna iterate through every single primary key. <clears throat> All right. Okay, we actually have Cassandra up and running and we set up our table for the MovieLens users data set. Up next, let's actually write a Spark script to populate this table and do stuff with it. So keep this up and running and we'll go right into the next lecture.